Hey everyone, how's it going? Now, in the previous video we looked at uh, services and promises and we looked at a pretty simple CRUD operation type app which listed a list of players and we added players, updated players and deleted players, right? But we, you, we built it all in memory. So there was a collection in memory that was contained in the service and we basically handled promises um, to maintain whether something was successful or not. Well, in this video, we're going to look into something a little bit bigger, and that is the HTTP client. And people are probably sitting there right now thinking, oh, finally, we're going to get a web server. You know, something to put in the, the back end, like a node app or something like that we're going to hook into, and we're going to do you know, uh, REST operations off that. Well... Not really. I mean, we are going to do that, and I'm going to cover that in the next video. But for this video, I'm going to stick with what's referred to as an in-memory web API. That is basically another package that is not part of the Angular CLI by default. But somebody has written a handy little web API that basically um, intercepts your HTTP XML request or what Angular uses to call that inside, and um, basically does an in-memory representation of certain data. So if you got like a, for example, in my case, the players collection, you can emulate that as a data source and make it look like it's part of a web API, so you can run REST um, calls against it for put, post, delete, get, all that kind of stuff. And it looks like it's coming from a web API, but it's really not. It's coming from in memory. Okay. So that's what we're going to be covering to start this video. And then basically after that, we're going to use the HTTP client um, to return uh, promises from this in memory web API. Now, another library is going to be used to start this video is something called RxJS. Uh, you may have heard of it already. Um, in other Angular 2 videos that people may have put up on the internet. I am going to be looking, I'm going to be doing videos on RxJS, just not right now, and simply because I want to slowly build up towards that. So for this video, we're just going to be looking at promises and how we can use promises to um, basically detect the same, the same thing we had in the previous one, but we're just using a HTTP web API. Now, the next video, I will be building a proper web server application and that'll be written in node so people can then see for a fact that the code we're going to write in this video is going to work in a real life scenario okay then we're going to move on to rxjs which i'll then go through what an, what an observable is and all those other bits and pieces okay but one step at a time let's take let's take this slowly because you know we can only absorb so much information in our minds in one go so to get started, we do have to do a few things though to, to get this underway. The first thing is that for this memory API to work, I had to update the Angular CLI. Now, that's a pretty simple operation. Right now, my um, version of the Angular CLI is this. So I've got version 1.0.0.beta.28.3, right? And this also requires an update, or it's giving me a warning at this stage that it requires a minimum node update of 6.9. Okay, so if you're running a version of node that is less than 6.9, what you need to do is you need to update that, because mine's currently running 7.5. So you can come over to the node site, and you can get the current version here, which is 7.5 or you can run it via brew install or however you guys want to update your node version that's up to you okay i'm going to leave that up to you guys to do that but you do need at least 6.9 based on the warning right and then basically what i've done after that is in my repository which i will come over to hp crud here which is the new repository that i've created i'm going to leave the clone um the clone links in the description. I've got three branches here. So currently I've got master, which is the end result for this video, but may eventually be something else in the future when we get to observables. But I've also created a branch that just says promises. That's the final result of this video. And then before HCP is before 
I implement the HCP part. So this is the starting point, this is the ending point, and this is whatever it's currently at, okay? So I'm gonna put the clones, I'm gonna put the clone for that, and then you'll have to switch to, in order to run, go along with this video, you're gonna to have to switch to the before HCP branch, okay? And that should get you up to this point. Once you've updated your Angular CLI. Now to update Angular CLI, if you've forgotten, it's just npm update dash g, because you want it to be globally updated, and then Angular dash CLI. Now I'm not gonna run this because it's a waste of time, but you guys get the gist of it. Once you've done that, there's one other thing we need to do. And I'm gonna close, I'm gonna stop my um, CLI here because I don't want to have this running right now. So what you need to do next is in order to get this in-memory way of API, we need to add it as a package. Okay, so currently over here in my Visual Studio code, I've opened up the full folder. I'm just gonna come into package.json. And that's very interesting, why did that happen? Ah, hang on, this is the wrong folder. Let me get to the right application here, HTTP CRUD. I'm gonna open this all the way. I'm gonna come into my package.json, which I have open. And now you can add it as a dependency or a dev dependency, it really doesn't matter. Uh, dev dependency is obviously when we're running in the dev environment. But I'm just gonna add in here, underneath the RxJS, which the, just to give you an idea of this, this needs to have a updated version of RxJS, which is 5.0.1 in my case. And if, and if you look at that, the latest version is 5.0, uh, 5.1.0. But for this example, we only need 5.0.1. So in here, I'm going to add in the Angular in memory API package. So Angular in memory API, a uh, web API like that. Right. And the version we're going to use is 0.2.4. And just close that and save. Now we need to go and install that. So again, we come back over here and we go npm install and we'll, it'll read the package here. So it should pick up that, that new um, package that we need to install. There it is. Angular in memory web API. And that's now installed. So now we can get access to this Angular in memory API system. So how do we, how do we use this thing? Okay, well, the first thing you need to do is you come over to your source, into the app, and we need to add a module. Okay, so we come to app module, and under and it must be under HTTP module, um, because if we put it before HTTP module, HCP module will override what this module does. Um, but after it, we need to include um, in memory web API module. So in memory web API module, which you can see there. Now I'm gonna grab the, oh no, that's fine up there. Uh, but we need to go for root, all right? So this is, this is for the root part of the REST API. So everything from the root of the app, it's hard to explain, but just for now, because we're not gonna be going too deep into it, just see it as this is the data that's going to be exposed for this API, okay? From the very root of the application. And then what I'm gonna pass it is something that's an in-memory DB service. Now, I'm just gonna create my own here. So I'm gonna go basketball player, uh, sorry, basketball player data. I'm going to call it that, okay? Now, I haven't created this class yet, but I will be. So I'm going to save this. And basically, what is this basketball player data? Well, this is going to be basically, essentially like our database that's hidden behind an API, okay? So when we do CRUD operations, the data that's in this class is what's going to be modified, updated, deleted, um, fetched from, all this stuff, okay? So we need to actually create this file. Okay, so that's, that's what I'm gonna do now. So, we're gonna come up to here, I'm gonna create a new file, and I'm just gonna call it for now, player-data.ts, okay? So, 
What so what we need to do from here though, and this is part of the Angular in memory API, we need to import something. So we need to import what's referred to as an in memory DB service, uh, which is what that for root was asking or asking for. And we're going to get that from yes, you probably may have guessed it, the Angular. Whoops, Angular in memory that thing. All right, so that's it. Now that we've actually included that package, this thing resolves, and then we need to export a class. And we're going to call it basketball uh, player data, like so. It's going to implement the um, in memory DB service, like so. And basically, this in memory DB service has a contract that has a create DB. So this is like your database. Um, that's hidden behind a, a, a in, in memory API, and this is pretty much where we put that um, where we put the data for the players, right? The players that are here currently. So if we come over to the player service, essentially what we're going to be passing is this. Okay, so if we may even just quickly grab this and go copy. Now it's not going to look exactly like this, so we'll just paste it underneath. So what we need is we need a players variable like this equals, and then we're going to pass an array. Now the array is not going to be a basketball player. It's just going to be an array of objects. So what we need to do here is we just put in some simple objects, right? Now for this example to work well, I'm going to add a, an ID for all these. And the reason why I show an ID is if you think like of a real REST API, what you generally do when you're doing CRUD operations against an API is you pass IDs around. You know, unless you're doing a get collection or you're you're doing a insert. Okay, they're the only times you probably don't need an ID. But for the rest of them, when you're getting an individual player, when we're deleting a player, and when we're updating a player, you're going to want to pass in an ID. Okay, so that's what I'm going to add here. So and then the rest of it's pretty much the same. So in this case, we've got first name, and we've got LeBron, and whoops, LeBron, last name, and we're going James. Now, I'm keeping these um, property names the same as the basketball player here. Okay, so if I go to basketball player, and the reason for that is I want to convert this this object here into a basketball player at a later stage. So I actually need to add an ID here, like so. And then the last one's description. And I hope I'm not going too fast for you guys. I'm trying not to. But you can always pause the video and have a think about what I'm doing here. Uh, it's pretty straightforward at this stage. We're just creating basically some data that will be returned or, or basically manipulated by an API using HTTP CRUD operations. So we've got three rows. We're going to have three rows here. And I'm just going to copy the data. So this is a bit of a boring copy-paste job here. Paste. And love. Paste. Copy. Paste. Copy, paste. The only time where you should really be copying and pasting. And no, copying code from the internet and pasting it is not a reasonable option unless you know what it's doing. That's just a bit of advice there. Okay, so we now do that. Now we need to return something here to say that this is, this is actually a data set. Now, it's very important what we name this variable here because what this is going to be is the name of the API endpoint. So how this in-memory thing works is if you put in the name players here, the rest path it's going to look for built in is API slash players, like that. If I make this players two, right, like that, then it's API players two that's going to look for. Okay, very important distinction there. 
um, that you understand that that's how it works because it may confuse you later on when we do the actual HTTP stuff, okay? So we've registered this now. We've got an, we've got an in-memory API sitting there ready to be manipulated. And that's all you need to do, okay, in terms of creating the API. The rest of it, in terms of HTTP client and all that, is already handled for you when you registered this um, module in the app module, all right? Now I just need to quickly add in here the import basketball player data from dot slash player dash data. Right. And now we're all good to go. Okay, so we have an internal API we're going to manipulate in order to do CRUD operations. So what is next? Well, let's have a look at the app component. Uh, whoops, sorry. The app component. Do we have to do much in here? Probably not all that much. Um, there might be a couple of situations where we might do a few things inside of here, but overall, we already said we're, we're returning a promise and we're handling the situation or some of the situations that we need to handle at this stage, right? Now, there's a few things that we'll need to do in here simply because this in-memory representation is going to have to be modified outside of the service now. Remember in the previous video, I said the service was, um, the players here was pointing to the same um, in-memory representation of the that was inside the player service. That's not gonna be the case now in this video. So we are gonna have to do a few extra things um, inside of these functions to especially remove and save um, to make the UI work, okay? And you'll see that when we get to it. So the first thing I wanna actually look at here is I'll look at the get players, okay? So we're already handling, you know, when we get a player, we're binding to the players that's returned and we're handling errors. This doesn't need to change at all, okay? So let's start with this. So we need to go over to the player service and basically we're gonna come in here now and we're gonna change a few things, okay? So the first thing I wanna do is we need to access HTTP, right? So we're gonna import that. So we go import, and we're gonna import two things. We're gonna import a HTTP, and we're gonna import something called headers. Now headers, you won't see for the get, but you'll see later for the insert and the update. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna add it now anyway. So from at angular slash HTTP, okay. Now, one more thing I need to add, and this is not something I'm going to talk about too much in this video, but I will be in previous in future videos. Um, we're going to import something called rxjs slash add slash operator slash to promise. And the reason why we're adding this is so I can stick with promises for this example. Further on, we're going to look at something called observables. When we get to observables, we're not going to need this, okay? But for this video, we need to use it. So we can stick with promises. Now the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna come down to the players, we're gonna go, okay, what are we doing before? Well, we're resolving a promise, we're setting a timeout, all right. The set timeout was to emulate a delay. We don't need that anymore because we're gonna have a real API, um, so to speak. Um, it's an in-memory one, but it's gonna be an API. So, and then we're resolving the stop players. Now this stop player is not needed in this collection anymore. And this is where we're gonna get that, um, the players being returned no longer points to the same object of memory issue anymore. So that gets deleted, because we're not gonna need it, okay? What we are gonna need, is we're gonna need a URL to point to an API. So we go private, and we go players, AP, players URL will do, equals, and remember app slash players, remember I mentioned that earlier? We're gonna add it here, okay? In this particular example. Now normally I would create a whole another service that handles just REST and you just pass in these things. Um, but for example, we're going to use HTTP. Now at this point we have not included HTTP in our particular service, so we need to inject that. And we inject services, well we did it in the previous, we did it in the previous video. So it's the same deal here. We go inject and we need a HTTP object, just like that, whoops. So now we get access to a HTTP object, so, or HTTP service. 
So now we go this dot HTTP. Right? So the HTTP is now officially. This is like we're we're going into REST. Okay, we're we're going to make a a, a web API call to some service somewhere, which in our case happens to be in memory. So then we go dot get because we're going to get something. What we're going to get is the stuff from this dot players URL. Okay. And then what we want to do is we want to return a promise, right? Remember? But, so we need to do that first, like so. So now we have a promise. However, this promise is not returning what we want. It's returning something called an observable response. Okay? That's, n oh, sorry. It's returning a promise of a response, sorry. We don't want to return a response object. We want to return some, we want to return players, right? Collection of players. So how do we do that? Well, now that we've got access to a promise and we have a response, we need to manipulate this response and convert the result of the response to a set of basketball players, right? As an array. And we can do that quite simply by using the then statement like we did in the previous video. So now we've got a response object. And again, we've got that arrow um, convention. And on the response object, we have something called response.json, like that, pretty simple. And then we can grab the data. So the response from the API, in our case, will be, um, it will always be wrapped inside of something called data. That's just how the HTTP um, object works. It wraps any response you get back from the web server inside of a data object. And it's simply because you can have other things for safety. I think it's a security thing. I can't remember off the top of my head, but it's something like that. And now we want to cast this. At this point, we don't we don't want it as it is. We want to cast it to something. So we're going to cast it to basketball player array. Okay. And at this point, we're done. Okay. Or are we? Not quite. Remember with any operation in HTTP, we can get errors, okay? So this is the, what we do when we get a successful return. What happens if we get an error? Well, we have to catch it. Now, uh, we could catch it inside of the, um, the app component. However, once again, if we catch it there, what's gonna happen is that we're, we're really getting some reason data from inside of the HTTP, right? We want to manipulate the message that comes back from the server and make it a little bit friendlier to understand for the component, right? We don't want to spit out like a stack trace or something like that out to the world. We want to just maybe grab... Um, Maybe there's an error code inside of it or something like that. Maybe we can manipulate that error code to represent another message, you know, so that when the component reads it, the user actually visually sees the error on their screen, um, gets something that makes sense to them, okay? That's generally what you do with any kind of UI, right? You get an error back from a server, and rather than showing them a, a bunch of stack trace stuff, which is a bit of a vulnerability, we show them a friendly message. So this is kind of what you do here, okay? But for this, I'm just going to go this dot handle error, and we're not going to handle this as perfectly as I suggest here. So, but I want to handle it here because I want to return something different. Okay, this is just how you would do it. So let me come down here and I go private handle error. Okay, and inside of handle error, we have a parameter, and it's an error. Now, this could be anything. We don't know what it is exactly. And then we're just going to go return, right? Promise dot reject. We're going to return the error or the message of the error, right? Or we're going to return the error if there's no message. Now, not ideal, again, we, we would do more in this area if we were building a fully fledged application, but we're not. Also, I'm going to log out the error. So we're going to go, and error occurred, and just to see what it actually comes up with, okay? So we can, like, we can see it as developers. 
Now, normally you would not have this in a production environment, but we're just doing development here, we're learning, so well, I'm just gonna do that for the moment. So that pretty much handles um, that situation. Now, we do have all this other stuff. Oh, I'll return, I'll delete this because we no longer need that anymore. And, oh, I've got to return this. That's one thing I've got to do. You've got to actually return it. <laughs> Otherwise, it makes no sense. Let's space these up to look a little better. Now, for these other ones, for the moment, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to comment out the code here. And we're going to get to it one by one. And that's just to get rid of the actual compilation issues. Um, because we're going to handle them individually. And the rest of it's fine. So, by rights, if I've done this right, we should still get a list of basketball players. So, if we come over and we refresh. Why is that taking so long to load? Uh, because I'm not running the ng serve. Let's do that again. And there's that warning once again. That's really annoying now. It's going to say that until I get the next version of Angular CLI. It's saying it's already being used on port 4200. Oh boy. Why is it not working then? That's annoying. Um, guys, I might have to just pause the video here for a second and we'll get back to this shortly. And I'm back. Uh, sorry about that guys. Don't know what happened there. Um, it seemed to say that the application was running on that port. It's like the old NG serve didn't quite shut down properly and then when I tried to run it again, it um, just crapped out. So I had to kill off that, that port and then I restarted NG serve and it was all good. So, but successfully, if you look over here, it's working. So now if I refresh, You'll see there's a bit of a delay, but then it kicks in. So that's, def that's normal for any HTTP requests. Now, the interesting thing is, you'll see down here, uh, when we come to the network tab, if I refresh the page, I'm currently sitting on XHR, which we all know is, well, hopefully you know that's as XML HTTP request. Um, we get this info thing, but that's to do with sockets and ng serve over here. But when I actually do something or it loads the screen, you'll see there's no HTTP request being made out there. Now, again, that's because of the, the in-memory API. It's, it's inter or intercepting any calls that are gonna be made out um, via XML HTTP, uh, by the XML HTTP request through the Angular framework, and just basically onboards them onto this in-memory data source. So don't expect anything to come out here. You're not gonna see it, okay? When we get to the next video and we point to a real server, you will see stuff coming out. Anyway, moving on. So as you can see, this was successful. So now when we return back, we are absolutely 100% returning back a promise where we are promising to deliver a list of basketball players. So once again, coming back over to the component, we changed nothing here. There's nothing that changed, okay? Now, let's move on to the next part. What bit do we want to do next? How about add, okay? We want to add a new player. So we're going to come over to the component and we're going to look down a bit. And we remember when we click the show player form, we're checking if it's, an, if it's not a player, we're going to create a new player, okay? Now, we don't necessarily need anymore to specify three parameters here because remember we do have an ID that was in the list. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create an empty array now for this basketball player, uh, empty constructor, sorry. Um, and we're gonna come back over to the player model and instead of doing all this, like so, I'm gonna just gonna come in, I'm gonna initialize stuff. So, like so, whoops. Okay. 
we're gonna create empty. And ID and number by default can be left as what the default is, right? We just want to make sure that we actually have some values, just even if it's empty. Okay, that's for a new plan. Is there anything else we need to do? Um, not really. Okay, so everything else stays the same there. Now down here, we've got an insert player. Now the one thing I could change here and should change here is that remember now at this point this player has an ID that's not being set. Normally when you do a a post to the database, you will get a new ID, a unique ID for that new player, right? So we need to be able to establish that. Okay? This call's not going to be sufficient, okay? So this like this part's fine, the catch is fine, but what we need to now handle is the then. So we have then, and what the then is going to do for this example is it's going to return an inserted player. Now the inserted player is going to have the new ID on it, isn't it? So once we have the inserted player, we're going to go this dot players dot push the new inserted player. Okay. And like before, the player we originally had here can be nullified out. We don't need it anymore. It was just a placeholder temporarily for the form. Okay, so we null it out, don't need it. This here will allow us to add um, the new inserted player to the player's collection, which now becomes very important to handle because this player's collection is no longer pointing to an in-memory representation, but in fact um, to a result of a HTTP request, which doesn't have a direct memory tie. Now you might say the in-memory API service might create a reference point. It doesn't. It creates a copy of the data and sends it across um, to the caller. So there is no reference there. So that's why you have to manually update this collection yourself now. So just a couple of little minor things that you, you have to establish. Now with a real HTTP server, that's what you would have to do as well. So there's no this would be required regardless of whether you use an in-memory API or a real one. I hope that makes sense. If it doesn't make sense, please send me an email. I'll explain more. Uh, so that's what we need to do for that. Catch is as expected. And for insert, that's all we really need to do from the component level. Everything else stays the same. We're still returning a promise. The only difference is now we're returning a promise that expects a player. Now, if we go over to the service, what are we returning here for an insert? We're returning any, okay? Now we need to return a player. Okay? And at this point, we're just resolving, we're, not, we're just passing through nothing, okay? This still works because whenever you do a resolve, and in fact, this doesn't quite work because we're not resolving anything, so nothing would ever be resolved. But we're going to do that right now. Okay, so how do we how do we handle this particular function? Well, let's have a let's have a think. It's actually not much different to the get. Okay, first thing is we're not going to return a promise anymore. That's that's the first bit. We're not returning a promise, or we are returning a promise, but we're not returning it using the promise object. Okay, we're going to be returning something from HTTP, right? So this dot HTTP, and what do we want to do? Well, we want to do a post. Okay, and what we want to post? Well, it's the player's URL. Okay, and what are we going to post? Well, we're going to post a JSON representation. JSON dot string file. A JSON representation of the player. Okay. So we're going to, re if we try and post it the way it is, I think it, it will not work for this post operation. It needs a string, I believe, or it's this body of any, but when I've ran this, I've needed to stringify this for this to work. And the last thing it needs is it needs a set of options. Now, if you know HCP or REST, you know that whenever you send something via JSON, you need to spot and specify that the content type is JSON, okay? 
So in order to do that, we need a header. So this last one allows us to add headers. So we've got a headers object. Now we need to specify what we want to put in this headers object. Well, I'm just going to put this dot headers for the minute. And the reason I want to do that is because up here, I'm going to create a headers object. Right. And that's where we get, um, we get this new, remember I passed up here the headers. We're now going to use this here. We have new headers, right, like so. And what I'm going to pass in here is basically a string of uh, name value pairs. So a dictionary essentially in top script. And the first one will be content type. Whoops, capital T. All right. And then after that, we have application slash JSON, like so, all right. Wondering why that content type here is blue. Weird. Okay, maybe it's just the editor. It's considering this a property of the dictionary, so I guess that makes sense. Um, so now that we've got the header specified, we're gonna pass that through, which we have. Now we're not done here. Obviously this is at this point, what it's returning is an observable of a response, which is not what we want to return, right? We want to do the same as we do with the get. So we go to promise. Right. And again, that's not enough. Why is that not enough? Well, the promise is still returning a response here. Right? We need, we need to change that. So we need to do as we did with the get. We go dot then and we pass in the response. Whoops. Like so. And just like before, we've got another response dot JSON dot data as basketball player this time, an individual player. Alright. Now that returns a, a no, sorry, not an array. Now that works. And you go, yep, that's good enough, but we want to handle the error too because we do not want to handle errors of type response. So we'll go catch. And in this case, um, we're going to handle um, this dot handle error, okay? Yep, I think that's right. Promise dot basketball player catch. Yep. This dot handle error. Um, our handle error rejects or anything at this stage. Um, what this should be handling. I oh, know it's still returning the right. Yeah, it's still returning the right thing. Now, the reason why we can't change this handle error to be promise of basketball player is because we use the same handler for a collection of basketball players, which is why we have error of any and we use promise.reject straight away, okay? So that's, that's, unless you wanna go and create another error handler just for this, you know, then you can have a different return type here. But other than that, you can't have a return type. So by rights, this should now, um, oh, sorry, this should now work. Uh, let's, let's give it a go. Let's try and insert a new player. So I'm gonna insert me. I'm coding, I don't know, submit. Now a bit of a delay and then you can see it comes up, all right? Now the other thing I wanna do quickly here just to show you something pretty cool is I wanna go back over to the UI for this. So app component, I'm gonna include the ID here. So TH, you know, ID, TH. And in the list here we go TD, layer.id. Now this is something you may not have noticed when you first load it. It's got one one one, and the reason why it has one 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 probably because my um, player data has one one one. Yup. So this needs to be two and three. So I'll reload that again. So we've got one two three here. Once again, I'll add myself. 
And this is the cool thing about the in-memory representation of this. I click submit and I come up, but look what also happens. It increments the ID. So now I'm number four. Okay, so now when I load the, um, or when I go to edit myself, which we haven't fully got it working yet, if I was to put an ID here, and in fact, I might even demonstrate this, even though I don't have it in my GitHub at the moment, which you guys can add yourselves if you really want to. Um, what I might do is I'll just go ID and we'll go um, form player dot ID. So this will allow us to see um, the ID. But what you'll see is when we do the insert, that's not going to look so nice because it'll probably be empty. And you can see it's empty. But if I come in and I edit Kevin, you'll see it's three, two, one, and then we'll come in, we'll add me, so Daryl, I'm coding, submit. There I am, I click edit. And you can see the IDs instantly become four here. Okay, now I'm gonna take that out just because I don't really like the fact that it's empty when I insert. You guys can try and make it toggle when it's an insert and all that stuff if you like. For this example, I don't really care, okay? So what do we do next? Okay, we've got insert, we've got get, let's try update. And now if you remember from the previous video, we did nothing for update in the service. We literally just resolved the promise, right? Well, this time we are going to do something, okay? We're going to do something interesting. So the first thing we're going to do, oh, actually, before we go to that, let's go back to the component. Let's make sure we're covering all aspects, which we are not. See, once again, we're not handling a... Actually, I don't know if we need to handle a success here because we're already using model binding. And I think that actually, that should be fine the way that it is. So we don't need to touch anything here. So let's go back to the service. All right, and in the service, we're gonna do a few things now, obviously, because we need to update someone. So the first thing I wanna do is, let's think about with a real API where we would update someone, we update them on API slash player slash their ID. Makes sense, right? Simple REST conventions. So we need to specify a new URL here. So let's go let update URL equals, and a cool thing about TypeScript is this tilde option. And we go dollar in parentheses this dot players URL, right? And then we go slash, in fact I should, yeah, no, that's right, slash dollar and we go player.id, right? You go, oh, cool. So what we're doing here is we're grabbing API slash players and then we're, in, uh, we're incrementing slash ID on the end, okay? And we need to do this so we can update the individual up, uh, player. And this is pretty much how the in, the in-memory API works as well. But normally under normal conventions, you should be doing it this way as well. So we've got that. Now, once again, we go return this dot, whoops, whoa, geez, that's definitely not right, SVG. This dot HCP dot put, all right, because we're putting something in. Um, update URL, what are we putting? Well, we're putting in the, the player. All right, and once again, we're gonna return the headers of this dot header because it's also JSON, right? We're, ju we're sending JSON over. Once again, to promise, you've seen all this before, so I'm just gonna quickly go through this. And all this is the same. In fact, I can pretty much copy the code from here. Like so, nothing there changes. Makes sense? In fact, there's only one difference. We're not returning a player in this instance. Why? Because we don't need to. We, we've, or at least in our case, we don't need to because 
um, the data that was updating is already in the object that was pushed through. So why return the same object back? Now, technically we could, and maybe an API would, you know, instead of just going success, it might return the object that you just updated back to you, to which you can associate a response. In my case, I don't care. I'm just gonna go um, create a method called this.success, right? And all this.success is gonna do is return an empty promise. Right. I'm just going to go return a promise of any. Right. And then just go return promise dot resolve. And that's it. That's all I want to do. Okay. If it's successful, I'm just going to resolve and say, yeah, we're all good. And then remove this last line here. Now, this should also work. So let's quickly go and check that. And we've updated here. So let's come in to see LeBron James. We'll click edit. And keep in mind, this is going to be very hard to know without looking at the console to see if there's any errors, whether this actually works. Why? Because we've got model binding turned on. And because we've got model binding turned on, uh, whenever I go LeBron and they go four, it's instantly going to update up here. Now with reactive forms and all those other forms that I've done in the previous videos, you can see more how this works successfully, but I'm just being lazy here. If I click submit, you'll see that's updated and there's been no error. So for the most part, you'll know that it's um, worked. And if we want to know if it's truly worked, well, you can do something like this. All right, we can come over to, oh, sorry, not this one. Um, we need to go to the component. And if you really, really want to know if it worked or not, we can come in and go not then, right? We can just call this dot ng on init, right? And what this is going to do, if you think about it, and this is not something I would keep in your code, but this is now going to go and make a full get request again to fetch it from the API and reload the player list, all right? So you'll see for a fact, or you can pretty much feel satisfied that it's updated, okay, by doing this. So let's quickly just check that. So if I come over and we're gonna edit LeBron and we change it to four, three, two, three, you'll see it's done that, I'll submit, all right? And what I might do as well, just to give an idea that it's actually disappeared and then reappeared. Because again, you still can't really see, can you? Um, so what I'll do is I'll clear out the list. And this is stuff I haven't done in my, um, my repo. So just keep in mind if you're looking at that and trying to find what this code is, it's not there. Um, is there a clear? Ah, oh, we'll just do this. Empty. Just point to a new array. Alright. It's not the nicest way because it's, it's changing memory locations, but it'll have to do for now. Alright, so let's give this a go again. And we'll refresh. And we'll update. Hopefully, we'll see like at least a flicker. Yep. And there you go. Did you see that? I come in, I go edit. Let's change it to 46. It clears for a second and then it comes back and you can see what's coming back from the API is correct. All right. So that, that validates that the update has worked. Okay. So now coming back, I'm going to get rid of this then because we don't need it because we're not doing anything else with it. And save. Now the last one we need to do is delete. Now do we want to do anything on delete? Yes, we do. In this in this case, we want to handle the in memory um, this dot players when we successfully delete from the web server. So we come in and we go then, and we're going to grab. Well, in fact, we already have the reference to the player. So uh, we're going to go this, in fact, it's a chunk of code. And now what do we write in here? 
well, we've got the play here. We've got the this dot play, so what do we write? Well, if we remember in the previous video, in the player service, remember I might be taking some of the code back. This is one chunk of code that I'm taking back, okay? So I'm moving this back out of the service and back into the component and I'm dumping it here. Now, why? Because I've got this dot players that index off finding that player and then basically doing that, right? And this should handle the, if we're successful deleting. And in fact, if I come back over, you'll see that it should work regardless. It won't delete from the server at this stage but it should delete from the table. So let's let's just have a quick look to see if that works. So if I click delete LeBron, and it didn't work, why did it not work? Probably, ah, because, remember I've got to resolve this. So if I've got to go resolve like that, okay? That is why. Remember earlier I said, oh, it doesn't really matter because we weren't looking at it yet? There you go. load this once more and we click delete now it resolved it instantly deletes itself okay so that code in the component is now working okay components are good nothing else needs to change inside of this now we can close it we're happy okay so we can close this we can close this we can close the markup and we even close the module and we're stuck with play.service now how do we handle a a delete to the server very similar to update we just come in here We'll grab this update URL and we'll change it to delete URL, even though it's the same. This is where you would normally create some kind of a resource configuration or something like that, so you don't have to keep repeating code. But for this example, I don't care. So we're not, we're not gonna have this promise anymore. And we're gonna return this.hcp.delete. Now we don't need to reference any player here but we do need the player to get its ID. That's why we've got it here. So we go to delete URL, all right? That's all we need. And then we need to convert it to a promise, like so. And once again, we'll go then. And in this case, we're just gonna go this.success, I believe. Yes, and then this.success because we don't care. Um, and also on catch, we're going to return this dot handle error. And save. Now by right, everything now should be working. Hopefully by now, this should make sense to you what I just did. So I, I called the delete method passing the URL because I've got the player slash ID. I've then called success, which is an empty promise handler that just resolves, and then a catch, which is the handle error, which handles any errors, right? And returns it. So I come back over, we'll refresh this to be safe. If I click delete now, there'll be a slight delay, but as you can see, LeBron gets deleted, okay? So that's the CRUD operations using promises. Now, if you wanna quickly check the errors, um, you can throw errors yourself. The easiest way to throw an error is is to change the name of the URL for the API, and that will prevent the get from happening. You can see down here, an error has occurred, blah, blah, blah. You know, so you can see straight away what's being logged out. So in the first case, we've got, you know, the an error has occurred in the error object, right? And the second one, if there's no error message, which happens to be there's no error message in this case, so we just dump out the object, okay? So, that's it for this video. Um, in the next video, what we're gonna do is something that a lot of you guys have been looking forward to, and we're gonna get rid of this in-memory um, web API, and we're gonna point to a real thing, um, to a real node uh, server. So I will spend a little bit of time writing a node server in the next video. Now. I'm gonna be honest with you guys right now. This is not a node course. So I will not be sitting there explaining every bit of node code that I'm writing. I'm just gonna show you very quickly how to 
create a simple web server that handles CRUD operations and I'll have an in-memory representation as well, as well of the web API data. Um, so what will happen is whenever we reload this page, the information will come back from the server, will remain consistent with what is on the server, rather than when we refresh this page, LeBron comes back. So if I delete him here and I refresh the page, you'll see LeBron's back again. In the next example, we will see I do this and they're gone. And then when I refresh, they will not be here. Only Kevin Love will exist. Okay. So thank you everyone for watching. Um, please comment down below what you think of the video. Uh, let me know of anything you have issues with. And once again, my email, my Twitter, anything to get in contact with me if you're stuck. But I'm going to end it there because I need to edit this and get it up for you guys to enjoy. And I'm going to go. So thank you everybody for listening, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.